Well, we're going to take a look at some basic forms and we're going to look at um, how Hale might uh, want us to look at them. Hale in the book talks about how it's important to understand what is a cube look like when light and shadow interact with it. What is a cylinder look like? What is a ovoid shape look like? Because we have to do many things when we're drawing the figure. We have to be able to use line, form, shading, lighting, and many other things at the same time. So it's important to practice these skills independently until they become unconscious, according to Hale, or subconscious. So you don't have to do too much thinking about it. Well, let's look at how to draw this basic form, the cube here. So I'm going to start off by looking at the edges of the cube, the top left back edge and the top right back edge. I'm making these angled lines because they match what I actually see. If I hold my charcoal stick over here and position it so it looks like it's on the back right edge, I get this angle and then I can come over here and see what angle to draw. So now I'm going to draw the sides. So here's the left side and over here the right side. I'm deciding how long to make the side based on how much I had to move to make the top edges. So I'm comparing the length here and here. I could do that if I have any questions about whether I, I was accurate by measuring the top side and comparing it to the side side. That segment should be half of this. So I have about the right proportions. Now I'm going to look at the bottom. So here's the bottom right edge. Again, I'm looking at the angle and the bottom left edge. So this gives me an idea of what is the flat shape of the cube. This might surprise you if you haven't drawn cubes before. It's common for beginners to draw a single straight line from here to here, for example, which makes sense intellectually, right? The bottom is flat, but we're not actually seeing the bottom. We're seeing the sides. And on a flat surface, sides that are closer and further away in space become angles like this, diagonals. So now I'm going to draw the interior surfaces, we call them planar surfaces. So there's one here, for example, where the left side of the box meets the right side of the box. And there's also a planar surface, the top of the box. So I'm going to try putting in an angle here that's roughly equal to this one, and an angle here that's roughly equal to this one to create the top. Now I'm going to check those angles against the actual box. They're a little flatter than I initially thought. And I'm going to check the back again. So this is a common part of the drawing process, checking your work and then revising it, changing it. All artists do this. So that's probably going to work out better as the top of the box. And this sometimes surprises people who are new to drawing as well. We have a tendency to try to equalize the sides. So many people will try to draw the top so that it's as approximately as big as the sides of the box. But it's not what we actually see. And if you look at the box really carefully, you can see that the top is quite a bit smaller than either one of the sides. Right. Now there's a few other problems with my box, so I'm going to take a look. Remember I measured the top compared to the side? Right. Okay. And I didn't measure this, so I have some proportions that are a little off. I need to correct those. 
Right. So I'm going to look and see what do I need to do. So this actually needs to be as big as this. Right. So this is too short. I'm going to need to extend this and this. Move this side over. So proportionally, that's a better representation of the box. So that means I have to change something over here as well. Right. Let me get the angle again. So this looks a lot smaller than this, which matches what I actually see. Right. Can you see that? And the fact the top now matches what I actually see a little bit better as well. This corner and this corner don't line up with each other, which is what's happening with the actual box. Okay, so now I'm starting to look back and forth and see uh, that the box I'm drawing on my paper looks a bit more like the box I see over on the stand. One of the biggest differences at this point that I see is that my box is all this medium gray. But when I look over here, I see different values or different shades. The right side of the box is the darkest. The top is the brightest. And the left side is somewhere in between. So let's try adding those things to the drawing. I'm going to now change my tool and get this soft kneaded eraser. I'm going to just knead it for a little while so that it's nice and pliable. And now I'm going to start taking out the gray top to convert this to a nice white, bright top of the box. As I erase, I'll need to change surfaces of my ruler, or my eraser. I'll need to change my eraser surface as it picks up more charcoal. I'll need a clean surface. Now, if I need this to be even lighter, I could switch to a different kind of eraser. This is a gum eraser, which will allow me to push a little harder into the charcoal and remove a bit more of it. I'm going to spend a little time erasing the lines that I drew on the top. Because the top of the box is so bright, I don't want any dark lines outlining it. Instead, I'd like to have the edges of the box represented by having a change from bright white to gray. So now I can come in and I can work on the edge a little bit. So I'm not really putting a line back in as much as I'm trying to make the ground, the background in this case, a different value from the top of the box. Okay, so this side of the box is a light gray, I could just leave it as is, or I could lighten up this gray a bit. And then this is a dark gray, so I can add more charcoal here. So I'm going to do with the charcoal stick on its side.
Now I want to differentiate the box from its background. So down here I see a dark shadow under the box, so I am going to make a dark line there. Over here, there's an area of dark shadow behind the box, so I'm going to put that in. Looks kind of like this to me. Now over here, I see the white table surface as being a bit brighter than the left side of the box. So I'm going to draw this area over here by brightening up the table surface. And if I look down in this area, this brightness continues coming towards the box and coming towards me. So I'm going to lighten this up. There's also some light area over here, so I'm going to try putting what I see in over here. There's kind of a bright area, almost like a triangle here. With the soft edge. And then finally, I'm going to look at what's behind the box, the background area. See if I can get this to match what I see a little better. I'm going to bring this down again. And over here, there's a little difference between the side of the box and the background, so I'm going to decide that this area is a little lighter, so I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. So here's my drawing at this point representing the light and shadow pattern on the box. I have a bright top, the light is strongest here, and also some bright table surfaces. The same light that's shining on the top of the box is shining on the table, so these areas are bright. Then I have a very dark area this right side of the box and some of the shadow behind the box, some shadow that the box itself is actually creating. And then I have an area that's kind of in between, right? This left side of the box, which may be a little brighter than I've represented it. So I may, if I develop the drawing further, go in and lighten this side up. There's many details that I could add to the drawing, but I think for the purposes of understanding the pattern of light and shadow, this might be sufficient. Okay. So now let's think about what we have here and see if we can apply it to drawing the figure. We're going to have a light source. In this case, it's called three-quarter light. It's coming from the side and above. Okay. That's creating a set of bright surfaces that are facing up. We have a set of dark surfaces that are f away from the light. The light's blocked. 
and then we have a set of surfaces in between. So we could simplify them as light, dark, and intermediate. Let's take a look at a part of a skeleton, human figure, um, that is going to have a top surface, a side facing away from the light, and something in between, and see if we can apply the same 